and I said, but now, you know, one thing about 2019, it's going to be the year of abundant harvest. Mm. Mm. And I thought, write that down. That's hot off the press. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. Well, then, of course, we just, we, I just really dove into it and, and, and seeking the face of God concerning it and, and what, what he's talking about. There is coming a move of God. greater than has ever been seen on this planet. Praise God. And it'll be a combination of healing and miracles and the teaching of the Word. Mm. We're in this thing. We're seeing things, man. We're, we're seeing things that are just boggle the mind. And we're there. Now, this is extremely important. Listen to me. It's extremely important. Every time our Father God brings about a mighty move of God, He provides everything it takes to do it. Mm -hmm. All the money, all the anointing, all the callings. Well, then why doesn't it just happen? Because it has to be received by faith. And it takes prayer. Yeah. It's in the prayer realm. Yeah. That's where you harvest. The praise realm is where you water your seed. <clears throat> and this is such a wonderful statement. God says, I will watch, verse 4, over the house of Judah. I will watch. I will keep my eyes upon the house of Judah, literally. The look of love, the look of care, the look of protection. The covenant look of promise, I will look upon them. I'll watch over them. In the midst of this massive force, this war, this amazing event, the Lord will watch over the house of Judah. That time, in that day, at, at some point in, in all of these events, they will finally go back to the God of the Old Testament, the Lord of hosts, back to His Word, back to His promise. They will know that He is defending them. There can be no other explanation for their victory against the world. They know that He is the power that destroys all their enemies. And beyond that, He will reveal Himself to them as not only their conqueror, but their savior. Downtown, now we were Catholic, you understand? Walking downtown, and she had my, hold of my hand, hold of Wayne, and she, there were some Hasidic Jews in New Orleans, you know, one of the girls, and she stopped and she looked and she said, Jesse, Wayne, that's God's chosen people, just like that. And I went, okay. I said, what are we, mama? She said, we're heathens. <laughs> that's what she said. But she recognized God's chosen people. Oh, can I say that, Lord? So come Christmas, and this is under the direction of the Lord, give something to God's biological family. Be a blessing to Israel. Be a blessing to a Jewish person. It's now, the biological family. I can tell you. But there are a lot of people who are, talk about not being Orthodox. I mean, there are a lot of non, they call them non-practicing Jews. They are waking up. I'm telling you, there's an awakening in the church, in the nations, and in, the, in the Israel. There's an awakening, the three-pronged awakening that is taking place right now. There are Jews that are waking up, and all of a sudden, they are seeing who they are and what God has created them. And I can remember one time on an airplane ride, Terry and I were flying back somewhere, and we had a, a, a Jewish man sitting next to us in the seat. and. He was looking over her shoulder and she was writing, weren't you writing the, the, the God's Faith for a Miracle? She was writing the program for God's Faith for a Miracle, a pre Christmas presentation. He started looking at it, started asking her questions. She started witnessing to him, not about Jesus, but about his own religion. <laughs> You're Jewish. You need to be a practicing Jew. You need to apply this word to your life. And we showed him several scriptures, and he was so amazed at what he saw, and he wrote us a letter later on. And he returned, he returned to the book. He returned to the book. He returned to the book. 